podcast host, Louis Lord Nelson, followed by a picture of Carlene with her two children, followed by the staff of Pretty Boy Elementary, and followed by Carlene posing with her class, and the students have paper crowns on their heads. Hello, and welcome to UDL in 15 Minutes, where educators discuss their experiences with UDL. I'm Louie Lord Nelson, UDL author and leader. Today, I'm talking with Carlene Warrens, who's a kindergarten teacher at Pretty Boy Elementary School in Baltimore, Maryland. She's also Teacher of the Year for Pretty Boy. Carlene is going to share how she focuses on self-regulation to help her students improve their executive functioning. Hi, Carlene. How are you? Hi, I'm happy to be here today talking with you. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you so much for being a guest. Let's just jump in. How Share with us how long you've been teaching and how long you've been at Pretty Boy. Students standing together as a class and stretching with their arms overhead. I've been teaching 27 years and all at Pretty Boy. Uh, most wow. of my, I know, exciting. It's a great place to be. A student leading discussion on weather and controlling the PowerPoint clicker. Most of my experiences in kindergarten and first grade, I've been the kindergarten teacher leader for the past six years, and I've been at Pretty Boy so long that now my students are saying, you taught my mom, you taught my dad. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Our new kindergarten assistant this year was also one of my students, which is very cool. A guidance page with pictures and words about being successful when we turn and talk. Oh, that is, that's a, oh, that's the wonderful cycle of teaching. Yes. That's a great story. That's incredible. So talk about the makeup of your classroom at Pretty Boy. So this year I have 19 students in my class, which is a nice, nice number, nice small number. I have 11 boys and eight girls. A classroom of students doing fist bumps. I have some students that receive some speech and language services. But other than that, they're a wonderful, energetic group of students. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and they're kindergarten, so they're going to be so energetic. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. Your school does a wonderful job of reaching out to the community and parents, not based on like student specific need, but because it's just the smart and right thing to do. Would you share some of the examples about how you guys do your parent outreach? Two students greeting each other with a fist bump. Sure, absolutely. Pretty Boy does a great job reaching out to the community. For instance, this month, we'll be having our kindergarten roundup for incoming kindergarten students, where we will meet with the parents and the students, and we'll start right away building those relationships and hopefully getting them excited for kindergarten in school. They'll be making friends and some other functions and things that we do at Pretty Boy. We have sneak a peek at your seat in the fall, where the children come in and they can see their classroom and meet their teacher and that's always packed. Back to school night, and I'd say in my classroom and most classrooms, all children are represented, and parents or grandparents are there to learn about you know their year. We have academic night, which is connected to our school progress plan, and many things. My favorite thing, though, is our kindergarten celebration at the end of the year where we invite all the families and siblings that, are, that can make it and grandparents and the children, the kindergarten students perform songs and they share what they've learned in kindergarten. And of course, we have our little teary slideshow to get everybody, you know, <laughs> remembering the year <laughs> with all those great little faces. The website homepage for Pretty Boy Elementary. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds wonderful. And I have to say the sneak a peek at your seat. Somebody else is going to steal that as soon as they hear that. That is a way fun name. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Parents always say that's a, a great start to the school year because the kids feel like, They've seen where there's classroom, their locker, and they just, it makes them feel comfortable. So it's a great thing. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's right there in engagement. It's that basis of of, um, our access level. So they feel safe and lowering those threats and distractions. I know where I'm going. I know what it's going to look like. And so right off the bat, you guys are just flowing with the framework. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. An image of the principle of engagement. So let's do a little bit more into that UDL part. So when you started with UDL, you focused on representation, but then a few years ago, you decided to focus on self-regulations. Why was that? And then what did you do? 
Most K students come into kindergarten needing practice in self-regulation, and I'm not sure if there's a rise in anxiety and trauma in children, or if an, as an educator, I'm just more aware, but I just wanted to help children learn how to manage their emotions and their stress, you know, self-regulate so that they could have access to learning. A bulletin board reading Stick With Kindness, student names are written on individual saguaro cactus. Kindergarten yeah. is such an important year for building those foundational skills, and I wanted to just give them more strategies and tools that they could use, they could problem solve and get to that executive state. Yeah, so do you use a specific curriculum or are you putting together strategies and practices or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. Two years ago, our school system introduced Conscious Discipline, which is a self-regulation program. The book, Conscious Discipline. It integrates social and emotional learning, school culture and discipline. Um, and the focus is on creating environments where children feel safe and connected so that they can have be in the optimal learning state, the executive state, and problem solve, goal achievement, have choice. So I always knew that it was important to build that safety and connection, but now having this a part of my curriculum and, and being able to explicitly teach and practice these skills, it's wonderful. A classroom jobs chart that uses clothespin with students' names written on them to denote the students' jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. So within that curriculum and the other structures, especially with kindergartners, it's not like you can just talk about these things. You have to represent them in a lot of different ways so that they can understand. And you have to look for different ways for them to kind of show what they know. So right. can you talk a little bit about that? A perpendicular list with pictures of classroom commitments. Sure. Well, to start off every day, we do activities to connect and unite as a school family. So in the morning when they come into school, they greet each other. Of course, they greet me as well. And in the beginning of the year, I start off with modeling and doing the greeting, you know, greeting the students and saying good morning. And we have cute little fist pumps and butterfly handshakes and all these fun little visuals for them. Two students greeting each other with a fist bump. Then they take that job over and they love it. And then they still come and connect with me in the morning as well. So we do activities to connect and unite. We sing songs that are playful, that include eye contact, touch and presence. All these things to make them feel safe at school. Students sitting on the floor working on a project. Another thing we do every day is we do activities to disengage stress. So I teach them and model how to do breathing. We have some fun, different breathings. We balloon breathe and, and we do the drain, we do the pretzel and we have visuals and we have many different ones and they like to choose which ones that we do. That was just a few. We do a lot of yoga, brain breaks or brain boosts, if you will. Students in a circle with a toy house and a toy campfire in the center. We play a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of games where we start and stop like freeze dance and loud and soft games. So that's a, that's a part of our day every day. And we do activities to commit. So when they come in in the morning, they commit to keeping it safe, safe for each other, safe for learning, and commit to following our rules. Our, and we call them commitments. Imagine that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's logical. That's good. Yes, yes. I do a lot of role playing and modeling. A student leaving the class while others sit on the floor watching. A lot of self-talk through all this, you know, especially in the beginning of the year, the first six weeks. But I continue, you know, I say to them, I'm going to breathe so that I can calm down. I'm going to put my book on the table so that I'm prepared for my lesson. So I do a lot of modeling. I use a lot of visuals and practice, practice, practice. I call that map. Model, add visuals and practice. Four books related to the self-regulation guideline. Nice. So that's a big part of our day, every day. Now, I'm positive that I'm going to have some listeners that are going to say, but wait, we are really pressured to dig into the academics in my school. I've got kindergartners, but we've got standards and we've got to get to the academics. And that's what I'm told. And they're going to be listening to you and how much time it sounds like you're spending on these things. So do you weave some of this into the academics? How do you find that time? So we definitely take the time the first six weeks of school to make sure that this is all in place for them. And if they feel safe and connected and we do these activities, it does take time. And it does, you know, we set up our morning meetings and we talk about our feelings and we, we use our big voice and 
they learn to say, stop, I don't like it when you touch my hair. Please keep your hands to yourself. All that is important to do so they feel safe and connected. And then they'll have access to that learning, that executive state. A girl pointing to cups with kind actions written on them. Students have put tongue depressors with their names on them in the cups. Paying attention, organizing, planning, prioritizing. It's so important to do this in order to get to that. And then as the year goes on, they have these tools that they use. And of course, we model, we do these things daily, but it doesn't take much time out of your day. And it actually is very helpful. An image of the UDL guidelines. What is so great about what you just described, when you look at the UDL guidelines, you guys are starting at the access level and just hooking them in with the recruiting interest. And of course, like I said at the beginning, minimizing those threats and distractions. But you're also finding ways to communicate with them and represent the information to them in ways that just meet their needs under perception. Then you're definitely moving down into the the line where it talks about building because we talk about the language and the symbols and you're making the language accessible to them because they're starting to practice just those very phrases of saying things like, could you please stop? I don't like it when you touch my hair or these are the things that I do like and just building on that language so that then they can internalize these things and the rest of your school year is moving forward and they do become more self-regulated and they're able to use those executive functions and they're probably better set to comprehend all this information because you're setting them up. But just a great example of how you all are walking literally from the top of the framework down, kind of in a meta way, in a big way over the course of the year. It's just beautiful. Absolutely. Yes. Um, We have a place in our classroom, too, that I want to definitely talk about. It's called the Safe Place. A space with floor pillows, a basket of fidgets, and a sign reading Safe Place. And it's a a self-regulation center. And there's steps that they go through when they go to the safe place. They start off in the beginning there. And of course, I do a lot of modeling. They get to the the safe place and they they say, if they had a trigger or how they're feeling, they, they say, you know, I'm feeling angry or I'm sad. You know, my mother left for work without giving me a kiss. And sometimes it's more serious. You know, some of my grandma's in the hospital. So we'll go to the safe place and I teach them how to calm. So they'll do some breathing. A little girl blowing on a pinwheel. And they talk about their feelings, how they're feeling. And then there's activities there to help them self-regulate. There's squishy toys and there's a wheel that they get to pick how they want to calm down. Maybe it's read a book or maybe it's write a note to a friend or draw a picture, a journal if they want to journal and write and draw. And there's feeling books. There's lots of things there for them to help them calm. A little girl pulling a fidget from a bag followed by a picture of a sign reading Time with Mrs. Warns, posted on a metal door, and student pictures on heart magnets. And then it depends what they want. Sometimes they want to go by themselves. Sometimes they want a friend. Sometimes they want me. But then I'll always touch base at some point and, you know, try to help them come up with a solution. And sometimes you can't solve all the problems, but you can help them calm down. You can help them have tools that they can, they say that, you know, I'm okay, I'm safe, and I can do this. Two children playing a board game. Yeah, so once again, it's just this great representation all the way across the guidelines. So lots of different ways for them to express how they're feeling. So between the journaling and then um, being able to maybe talk to a friend. But then there's also these things that they can manipulate, the squishy things, the kind of the fidget type things. A child using a laptop to record himself on video. And even interacting with a book to help them calm down so they are working on all these skill sets to take them toward becoming those expert learners. And so they can regain their motivation to come back into learning environment, their understanding how to be resourceful for their own needs when they've got some social emotional needs. And then they're figuring out how to be strategic in moving through those needs and how to really understand their own goal. Seven children's books, all connected to self-regulation. This is, it's just a wonderful setup, and it's just so exciting to hear about. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. It's a great program. It, it's, it's helped me as an, as an adult learner to learn to say that everything doesn't always have to be perfect, and I, I'm not going to control my kids, but I'm going to help them learn how to control their emotions and their feelings. 
and it's a great place to be in my classroom right now. <laughs> and always, oh, that's I hope. wonderful. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that after these 27 years, the fact that you have kids going, hey, my parents were in your classroom. There's some really yes, good memories absolutely, there. Absolutely. That's awesome. Carlene posing with her class. The students have paper crowns on. Well, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast today, Carlene. Thank, thank you so you. much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Video clips of navigating the udlapproach.com, followed by a picture of podcast host Louis Lord Nelson. Thank you so much. So for those who are listening to this podcast, you can find supplemental materials like an image montage with closed captioning, that montage audio descriptions, and a transcript, and an associated blog at my website, which is theudlapproach.com forward slash media. And finally... If you have a story to share about UDL implementation for UDL in 15 minutes, you can contact me through the UDLapproach.com. And thanks to everyone for your work in revolutionizing education through UDL and making it our goal to develop expert learners.